So welcome, my man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Vinko. Pretty, I'm honored pretty. to be in your podcast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm really grateful that you are here today. So what do I want to know for in the beginning is I, I want you to, to tell me a little bit of your background. So where did you grow up? Where, where, where are you born? Where do you live right now? And some, something like this, a little bit of, of info of the background story of yours. Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, first of all, my name is Abraham Cueto. I am from Mexico. I, I grew up over there. Um, I'm 20 years old. And well, when I was a kid, I was living like in a small, not small, like the capital of a state in my country. But it wasn't that big. It wasn't that, uh, yeah, that's in, it wasn't that big as comparison of other cities. And um, the uh -huh. upbringing that I, that I got from, from my parents wasn't that, um, that uh, brilliant uh, in terms of the world, knowledge about the world, knowledge okay. about uh, how life goes. The, they just gave me whatever they could, you know, their best. Of course. And, and I appreciate that. It's something that I value very much. But I was thirsty of more. Mm -hmm. So since the beginning, um, that was kind of the, the kid. I am the oldest of four kids. Oh, so I was always nice. like exploring, you know. Uh, whenever my parents or my grandparents were giving me a rule, mm -hmm. I was like, questioning it you know like why do i have to follow that mm. let me just do what i want you know mm. <laughs> and so i i that's pretty much what i did i got into a lot of trouble i made a lot of mistakes <laughs> but i was following my heart you know and and, and what i thought was right at the moment mm. so what, what what was the what was the name of the city that uh, you were born in and that that you grew up in so you said that that you are 20 20 or 28 years old? 28 years old. 28, okay. So you said that, that you are coming from Mexico originally. So right. wh which, which uh, city is that in Mexico? You said it is not a capital of, of Mexico, which is Mexico City, is it? Right. So uh, the, the city is uh, Te Tepic, okay. Tepic is T-E-P-I-C. Uh -huh. Okay. So was it, uh, so was it a is it is it a big city or a smaller city? So how how many people are living there? Well, actually, it's the capital of a, an state in my country, uh, but uh -huh. the state is not that popular. Um, it's on the Pacific coast. We have mm -hmm. like very good weather and stuff, and there's a lot of nature, mm. um, beach weather. And, uh, and vegetation type of thing. Cool. Uh, but it's not really big. I, I would say probably right now my city is maybe about half million people or a million people maybe. Mm -hmm. Half million, I would say half million. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that big? From our standards here in Croatia, this is a big city. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, because okay. man, Croatia is only four and a half million people, and uh, right now I'm living in capital, and the capital is uh, almost one million people. So a lot of people are living in the capital city here in Zagreb, and yeah, this 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 is a big city uh, <laughs> when you think uh, in our standards. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So uh, you were born there, and uh, how long did you stay there? Uh, when when did you move to? You are living in Los Angeles. Is Los, Los Angeles right now? Are you? Yeah, that's where I'm, I'm. I'm living right now, and I moved here probably about four years and a half. Um, December is gonna be my. Um, it's gonna be um, five five years, four years and a half. Okay. And uh, my whole life, I lived in my city. You know, mm. uh, the thing is that with my family, we, we, we did travel around the country, around Mexico, but it was like, you, you just go out to know the, what is 
um, it, what life is in another states, but you always come back to your home and, and you are okay there. Mm -hmm. You should not go out, you know, stuff like that. So I studied architecture in Mexico mm. and I used to work with my dad, who is an architect as well. Mm -hmm. So I was really involved in, in that uh, art and that, that type of job, but I, was, I wanted mo more, you know, I wanted something more. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of my, my, my aunt, my dad's uh, sister, mm -hmm. she brought me the first time to the U.S. when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. so it completely changed my vision of the world, mm. especially because there was another language. I had the experience of being uh, in a country that uh, people don't speak my language or not most of them. Mm -hmm. you know, California, there are a lot of Hispanic speakers, but still I had to experience English and I, I felt the limitations, the, the language barrier. You mm -hmm. know? So I was like, okay, that's something that I would like to learn. But man, your, your pronunciation right now and your, your language, uh, your skill of, of speaking English is really, really good right now. I don't know for how many, so for how much years do you speak English uh, on a regular basis, but it sounds perfect. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, man. I, I put the work, you know, I, I, I dedicated myself to learn the language. And mm. I actually learned it when I moved here. Because when, when I was like, as I told you, my aunt brought me to this country when I was 15. Okay. But I, I didn't like the language. I thought that I would not need that language from, in my life. Mm. So I was coming like every year or so to the U.S. just to work and have fun here, buy good stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And to Mexico, and also I was doing some business like bringing cell phones and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was not really caught on learning the language. So when I decided to move here was to learn the language because I found that I that I that it was required for my career. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, okay, I moved to the U.S. and learn the language. So when I moved to to L.A. Los Angeles. Uh, I dedicated probably two years and a half of my life to, to just learn the language. Hmm. And, um, cause I, I, I could not speak, man. I could not speak anything. So I decided to just get involved and, and, um, submerge into the language hmm. and learn as much as I can practice as much as I can. Something that helped me a lot was singing, <laughs> you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is living in, in America for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. And there is still this accent there. But uh, when I hear you speak, I cannot hear any kind of accent. <laughs> any kind of accent. You know, when, when Arnold says, I'll be back in, in, in this German, German English language. Yeah, really, 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 really great. And this is this is uh, one of my goals. I don't have an opportunity to speak English so much. I consume a lot of a lot of content in English. I I read a lot of books in English. I I watch a lot of videos. I I listen to a lot of podcasts. And uh, this is this is my best best uh, opportunity and a best way to 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 learn about in English uh, language. But I really, really need uh, to practice it. I need to use it just like I'm using it, using it right now. So this is something that I want to do in the future. So, so you said that uh, you moved to, to L.A. So was it in 2014? Mm -hmm. Yes, about that. Yeah, 20, actually, 2013, at the, almost the end of 2013, yeah. End of 20, 2013. So you moved there all alone? All by myself. Um, I moved by myself here, but I stayed with my aunt, the one that brought me to this country the first time. Okay. Um, I lived with her for a couple of months, probably eight. Uh -huh. So she, she is living in, in LA? Correct. Okay. So she was, she was the, the connection there when, when you moved. Exactly. And, and, you know, 
I appreciate all her effort and everything that she did and still does for me, you know, because mm. um, it's, I think it's very shocking when you go to another country and you don't, you have nothing but yourself. Yep. So she, she gave me that kind of like uh, family vibe. In this yeah. Country. Which can really, really help. Really, really right. help. So what, what, what was, uh, can you describe a little bit to me? And to the audience, what, what was uh, the experience uh, of those first few days and the first few months when you moved to Los Angeles? What, how, how did you feel? Um, and just, just can you describe a little bit the whole experience and the feelings? Yeah, for sure. Um, even though this country like, is so beautiful, man, and you have a lot of things to do, LA offers you a lot of stuff, but I had this uh, battle within me about uh, where was my family, you know? I was mm -hmm. so attached to them that I was missing them very much. Yep. And I was scared. I was scared of doing something that wasn't what I've been doing for mm. four years. And it was just something so different. Um, I was confused, I was scared, I was insecure. Mm. Um, yeah, I was afraid of going out because I didn't know the language. What if I get lost? What if something happened to me? Mm. How could I communicate with them? Mm. You know, and I, I didn't feel protected, I think, as I mm. used to feel in my country or with my family. Mm -hmm. So you were one hundred percent out of the comfort that, that you <laughs> that you were familiar with when you were living in your in your uh, hometown. Yes. And this the situations like this are always a great great uh, learning opportunities and and opportunities for growth. So whenever we are out of our comfort and to do something like that, uh, something that you did four years ago it, it is a really really bold bold move yeah and i congratulate you on this so uh did, did you finish some kind of a university or a college there in uh, in mexico yes i studied architecture and i finished my career over there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when when i moved here my first intention was to just learn english right okay uh, but then I liked the country, I liked the life, lifestyle, I mm -hmm. liked the opportunity. So I decided to stay and then I started doing my, working for a construction company. Even okay. though I didn't know the system, you know, like architecture in the US is so different than the architecture in Mexico, especially the, the materials that we use, the systems that we use to, to build okay. are totally different. So. Oh. I had to kind of relearn a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and I had the fortune to, of meeting um, great people. Mm. Um, my aunt introduced me to a, to a builder, a contractor. And I remember that I told him like, hey, I'll work for you for free. Just teach me how to, how to um, do the blueprints here because I don't know the construction system. Mm. So he taught me all that. I worked for him probably. I offered ninety days about that, mm -hmm. but I worked probably s about sixty days, like two months for free. I think okay. he paying me, you know, like hey, Abraham, I think you can cover one position, so I'll start paying you. Mm. Great. I remember the, the first um, plan that I charged for? <laughs> I asked him like, "Oh, just give me a hundred bucks." you know mm -hmm. and he laughed and he told me i'll give you 200 you know mm. and it made me feel so good i was like oh i made more money but because mm. i was charging um uh the right amount so he told he already knew that and he was like no i'll give you more you know your your job um uh, uh, is is worth more value than what you're asking for mm. So, uh, where did you hear about this kind of a approach that you are 
uh, you, you were willing to, to give your service, your services, your knowledge for free, for free in the beginning, so that one day that you hoped that you, that you will get the opportunity to be uh, a full-time employee there. So where, where, where did you learn uh, something like this? Yeah, did actually, you... what... mm -hmm. yeah. Go for it. No, 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 just, just say it. Okay. Yeah, actually, when, uh, when I was visiting, before moving to the U.S., when I was visiting, um, my aunt introduced me to this uh, coach, life coach. Okay. That in the long, in, in, in after a couple of years, we became friends and he's still my coach. Mm -hmm. Until this day, uh, we meet each other probably once or twice a month. Mm. But I remember the, that he started gave, giving me this new idea. So ideas that I haven't heard before. Mm. If your service for free and just ask for, for, for the knowledge, you know, because mm -hmm. if you don't no one is going to hire you just because you are pretty or something like that. You know, he was mm -hmm. like, you have to give them value so you can have an exchange. He's going to mm. give, you're going to give them work. Mm. So that's the approach that I learned from him. Man, when I'm listening right now, I see that your aunt really, really gave you a helping hand oh, <laughs> when, yeah. when you come, came there. Great stuff. Great stuff. So, you know, I've been fantasizing about California and Los Angeles for, for quite some time. If I ever decide to, to, to move to another country, uh, it, it would really be California and it would be uh, maybe Los Angeles or, or the, some smaller cities that, that are around Los Angeles. Because uh, I think... And not only I, but the world knows already that, that the California and, uh, and especially Los Angeles is, is maybe one of the centers of the, of the world, of entrepreneurship world, of the entertaining, uh, entertainment world. And a lot of other uh, great things are happening there. It is a great center for in innovation uh, of technology and a, a spot in the world that is really, really moving humanity forward. So I'm really, really inspired by that place. So it is a great, great place to live. And I hope that, that you are really, really aware of uh, what kind of opportunities do you have there. So could you, could you speak a little bit about Los Angeles? Can you sp speak about the experience of, of living there? Yeah, for sure. Um... Well, Los Angeles, the thing that caught me was the variety of people. You know, I can meet people from, of course, America, South mm -hmm. America, Asia, Europe, you know, um, from all over the world. And all those people are living in just one city. Mm. So um, I have the fortune of meeting great people from different nationalities. Uh, one of my best friends, he is from Vietnam. Mm. And I couldn't imagine meeting someone from Vietnam while mm. living in my country. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing here in, um, in Los Angeles is the weather. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. You can have the beach like in a few minutes, like probably half an hour away from from almost any city around Los Angeles. You can have the mountains, you can have the desert, um, you can have like the access to everything, man. With, for example, the services like Amazon, we can have mm. everything here. You can have a lot of different communities. Mm. If you like to do yoga, if you like to surf, if you like to do uh, hiking, if you like to do rock climbing, if you like mm. to read books, and even weird stuff, you know, like you can find that type of people here so that's something that i like that you can connect with different people that like to do similar activities or think the similar way as you do mm. and, and also is um, there are so many things to do in terms of like work-wise where you can give value that there's no excuse of not making money over here 
you know you mm. can you, you you have too much or not too much but a lot of industries from where you can choose from and grow from there mm. you know or you can start your own company is not and it's not that complicated you know it sounds like heaven to me <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like heaven the uh, <laughs> not <laughs> entrepreneurship uh, opportunities uh, uh, a lot of great people there i'm also a big big uh, lover of nature just like you I, i've seen your photos on instagram and the variety of nature there in california california is just absolutely beautiful magnificent magnificent yeah uh, but uh, what what about uh, when we when we watch uh, Hollywood movies and things like that, is is there really uh, this high level of of crime there? Are 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 there some kind of a negative sides to it, or is it everything uh, nice and dandy? <laughs> well, I think there is there must be some crime, but to be honest, man, I haven't seen anything. Oh. Myself, I haven't. I haven't been around those um, events. Mm -hmm. I have seen um, car crashes, you know, when they, there's an accident in the freeway or on the streets, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But no, not really like crime. Not really. I, actually, uh, no one has ever stolen anything from me. Mm. And I think, um, of course, there is a factor of like uh, with whom you are surrounded with. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how well you protect yourself and your stuff. You know, you just have to be aware where you are at and what are the measurements that you should, uh, the measures that you should take to not get involved in any problem, you know. And, and I'm aware that stuff can happen to me and to my stuff, but, but it hasn't happened. And I hope that it stays like that. <laughs> Let it stay like that. Let it stay like that. Great, man. So I know that two of us don't have uh, a lot of time today. So I want to I wanna jump uh, on another, another uh, questions. So you know that both of us are consuming a lot of content re regarding the, the self or personal growth. So as Tom Bilyeu says, you have uh, you have a people uh, one 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 type of, of people of person. They have a fixed mindset, and some other people have growth mindset. So, what kind of a mindset do you have? I I suppose that you have a growth mindset, and what do you do about it? How do you go about it? How do you grow? Uh, how do you learn? Where do you learn from? And all those other beautiful stuff. Can you can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I don't have like a hundred percent defined um, growth mindset because you know sometimes the uh, the fixed mindset appears. You know, it shows, and I think it's okay. You, mm -hmm. is, there is nothing to freak out about, but you just have to go back to the growth mindset, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as you can. So the things that help me stay there in the um, growth mindset, be, first of all, be surrounded of an environment that promotes, promotes that type of mindset. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, you know, podcasts, videos, Audios, books, conferences, friends. I think friends are very important mm -hmm. because um, Tom. I think even Tom Bill says that you're like the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, a great Jim Rohn quote. Yeah, correct. So I try to be around the people that I want to. I, I try to be around the people that is that is going to give me um, one trait, one thing that is going to make me go forward 
and stay with that growth mindset. Mm. And that's why I try to listen to, for example, in this case, like Tom Bilyeu, Jocko Willink, um, as much as I can, so they can become one of my five people. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And this is a great, great thing uh, about internet. So if we don't have five people around us and we cannot find, find them in person, it is a great way that it is a great opportunity so that we can find them online and surround, surround ourselves with them uh, with, uh, through the things like, just like you mentioned, YouTube videos, podcasts, books, and uh, other, uh, other similar things. Great, great way to, to learn, yeah. Correct, that's correct. Bingo. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what what is what is your vision for 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 your life? What is the the vision for your future? You know, uh, the thing that I want to promote with with this uh, with this brand uh, and the content that I want to create is, I want to help the the people that that uh, that uh, consume this. How can they? really create the life of their dreams how can they find uh, their their passion and the, the purpose in life how can how can they really uh, live in their in their element so know what, what are their strengths uh, and really really live in that element and try to grow that so what is your vision what 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 what, what kind of a future do you do you see for yourself and can you can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, kind of uh, the mission that I gave myself: show people that is possible. You know, whatever you want to do is possible. Mm. Cool. Um, probably you have seen uh, in my Instagram that I jumped from an airplane. Mm. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't see that. Diving. Uh, cool. <laughs> well, there's a picture when, when okay. I jumped from that. Cool, airplane. cool, cool. And it was a really fun experience. I, I recommend everybody to do it. Uh, but one of the main things of, of what I did it was because I wasn't scared about it. And also a lot of people told me that, that I should not do it because I mm. might die. So what, what I told that people, you know, is... It was like, um, I prefer to do something that I like to do and hmm. die than do not do it and always stay with that feeling of what could have happened. What, how does it feel like to, to jump from an airplane and, and don't hmm. take action, you know? And I remember my, my brother, he's, I'm 10 years older than him. So, so he told me like, how did you do that? Why did you do that? And I was, I told him like, I do it because I, I could, you know, and I did it because I wanted to. Mm. And you could do it as well. You know, you can, well, you just have to decide it. So that's my mission to, 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 to show people that whatever you want to do, it's possible. You can mm. do it. You just have to decide it, and do something about it, mm. you know? Uh, so what, what, what kind of future do you see for yourself regarding your, your, your work, your, your, your life? Do, do you want to have a, maybe a girlfriend? Do, do you, do you want to have a family? If, if you have a blank canvas in front of yourself, what, what kind of a painting would you really like to paint? <laughs> well, um, I visualize myself... Uh... In terms, of like say, let's say, then career-wise, I want to become one of the best architects and um, architecture uh, servers in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to help a lot of people with any project that they have, because I'm a creator. You know, I'm using architecture as a way to create. Mm -hmm. So I like to help other people have what they want. So architecture is one way of doing it. 
Also, I want to go to countries that are less fortunate than than the U.S. or Mexico, and and help people that don't have the resources of ha to, to have a decent home, mm. and go there, work with them, build be, build with them their house, you know, and mm. show them how. how and and it's gonna be for free. I wanna do humanitarian mm. projects as well. So that's gonna be a, one way of me giving back. Uh, I see myself uh, wife for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I see myself with kids as well. That's why I'm working a lot on myself right now. So I could become a better man, mm. you know, the best version of myself. So I can give Great. that to my kids. So I can. I can share that with my wife and also I can become, I can become the man that the lady of my dreams mm. wants, you know, I could not be where I am right now and wanting a, a woman that is in a higher position, not in terms of mm -hmm. money, but in terms of being who yeah. she is. So I'm just going up so I can align cool. with her. And then when we align, we can, you know, live life together, improve ourselves, help ourselves to get better and just enjoy this adventure of life. You know, wow. we decide to have kids, bring them and also teach them what we think it's good, but also letting them decide what they think is good mm. for them. And I visualize myself traveling around the world and I know that concept sounds redundant in terms of like everybody says mm -hmm. that, but my objective of traveling the world is because I want to know the culture. You know, if, if I meet a French guy here, he's going to share or she's going to share with me um, to her mm -hmm. or him what France, what France is like. But unless that I go and experience myself, I'm never going to have a, the right idea because, you know, my perception is different than his or hers. So I would have a different image of France, mm -hmm. you know, my own image of France. So I want to go to different countries and have the experience just to, to see what could I get from that country. What is going to be my, my, my concept about the culture, the, the, the way they live, um, the, their food. Mm -hmm their architecture mm. yeah you wanna you, know. you wanna taste it you wanna Anything. feel it yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah yeah you know uh in in the in the gary v's word words uh this is the classic story of clouds and dirt so this is you these are your clouds your your vision your your big picture it is something that you hold in your mind it is something that, that you visualize. It is something that you imagine for yourself that you want to create in your life. So, but uh, how, how does your dirt looks like? Um, it's pretty basic. I think I, I have like three things. Um, like cultivate good habits mm -hmm. every day. Um, be disciplined and look for optimization. Okay you know, how to optimize everything. Um, for example, what I do every day is, uh, is like when I wake up right away, like I drink my water. So I have like, you know, I am hydrated. I like to have a good amount of sleep, probably between four to eight hours. It could be less than that. So, so when do you usually go to bed? Uh, I go around 11. 12 p.m. Okay. About that. And I woke up at 4 or 4.30 a.m. Oh, my God. It's really, really early. Yeah. So you, 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 you don't, you don't feel, you don't feel that uh, you're, you're not getting enough of a sleep. Are you feeling tired, maybe? To be honest, man, right now, I don't want to sleep for a long time because I just have this drive to achieve my <laughs> goals that I think is more important for me to be working, working out, reading, doing meditation, serving other people than sleep. I, I, don't get me wrong, man. I love mm. to sleep. 
you know, I, I'm a big one on sleep, but um, we're just right now, like, in, I've, been, I've been just, like, trying to sleep as little as possible, but that that gives me the rest and to be able to, to um, perform well during my day. Mm-hmm. Something also that helped me is that around 2 to 3 p.m., I take a, a powerful nap mm-hmm. of like 20 minutes, 30 minutes the mm-hmm. most. So I think that small sleep helps me to get throughout the rest of my day. Mm-hmm. So you are, you are feeling uh, mm-hmm. after, after those hours of sleep, you are feeling uh, energized and you are feeling that you are performing on your optimal level. You, you, don't, you don't sense the, the, the need for more sleep. So you have four hours at, by night and uh, one power nap during the day. This is enough for you. Correct. So you feel that this this will will be sustainable for you in the longer period of time also? I think yes. I think yes, because, you know, I'm, I'm young. I'm 28. So I think that right now my mind my brain and my body, they can, they can work with that. Cause you know, during the weekend, I, I sleep like my eight hours, sometimes a little bit more. It depends on how I'm feeling. I'll let my body rest as much as it wants during the weekend, but during the week, it, it does what I tell it to do. Mm. So if, if I just need to sleep four hours in order to do all the activities that I want to achieve during my day, that's the amount of sleep that I'm going to get. Mm. And also one good thing is like, you know, I, I sleep those four hours, drink my water with a little bit of um, um, Himalayan pink salt and lemon mm-hmm. juice. And then I go right away. I, I, I do my reading. I'm reading um, the book from, from um, Joko Willink, uh, Discipline Equals Freedom. Mm-hmm. And that gives me uh, fired up, you know, in the morning. Mm-hmm. Then I, I go straight to to see my vision board of all, as you said, the clouds, you know, like the motivation. Mm-hmm. What am I doing this for? So it also gives me, you know, pumped up. And then um, I do a gratitude uh, time. You know, it could be, it can go from five minutes to probably 15 minutes in the morning. Mm-hmm. So drink water, then um, read visualization of my vision board, Mm -hmm. and then gratitude, Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, when when you meditate, I I suppose that you use the technique of visualization, is it? Uh, Actually, like, my meditation goes more towards... um, End of the day? Gratitude. Uh gratitude. Close my eyes... And I started visualizing myself, as you said, like, you know, like with the things that I want, the want, the things that I want to achieve today, the things that I want to achieve in the, you know, in the upcoming months or years. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to start to be grateful about it. Like, oh, thank you for giving me these opportunities. Thank you for giving me these blessings. Mm-hmm. Thank you for giving me these uh, resources. Mm-hmm. Thank you for giving me these challenges as well. Mm-hmm. You know? So, uh, do you have enough of a discipline? Have you built already a momentum that this is something that, that, that you do every single day? Or do you do it uh, on and off? How do you go about it? Well, to be honest with you, um, I don't do it like every day. Because, you know, sometimes life happens and I I have to prioritize sometimes. Mm-hmm. And even though those are my priorities, if something comes up, I have to adapt and then, you know, yep. tackle down that thing that I have to do, mm-hmm. you know. Because yeah. uh, there are some days that, um, that I have to be, for example, at work, at building and safety to pull out some permits at 7 a.m., so sometimes it doesn't give me the chance. Still, I have to. I just have to work on that and make a better um, routine when those cases appear. Mm-hmm. But I think most of the time, I'm I'm really doing my habits. You know, I'm doing the the good habits. Sometimes when I'm in a rush, 
what I do is I just dedicate less time to them, but, but I still do do them, you know. So, what is what is the most power, powerful habit that that you uh, really try to implement each and every day? What which one of all the, those things that you do, which one will you uh, pick up as as the most beneficial for yourself? Hmm. Well, because also after those four habits that I just mentioned, I I work I go to the gym and work out probably for about two hours. Okay. Right. Uh, so working out is very powerful to me, mm -hmm. to be honest. But um, if I could just pick up one of these habits, morning habits. Hmm. Interesting question, is it? <laughs> probably, yeah, probably I would choose. Uh, hmm. Probably would choose uh, visualization. Okay. You know, uh, to be able to have the target, you know, my goals mm. in my mind is mm. very important because uh, I could have a bad day, but if I remember. Mm for what I'm living and for what I'm doing, whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that even those bad days count as good days because they help you with something, you know, mm -hmm. that gives you something else. And it's uh, a good time to taste, to, no, to, yeah, to, to, to taste how good you have become, you know, if you can handle those moments. So if I have the vision of whatever I have to do during the day and my goals, I can go through anything. Yeah, very interesting uh, option, choice. Uh, you know, have you ever heard about reticulate activating system? Yeah, I have. Yeah. With Tom Billy. Yes. So when, when you know how our mind is working, uh, I don't know, for example, I knew that uh, I will be getting a new car and uh, since that moment when, when I knew what will be my next car I started to to see them on the streets every single hour I, I can see I don't know a few of, of those car or, or this car on the streets so when when my mind knows where to shoot and what to what to focus on I can really, really, really see those things around me in my environment. So this is why setting a goals, setting goals, and this is why visualization is so powerful. And I, I really, really, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you picked visualization. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that we we um, have the on. same uh, opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah. So something that is really, really interesting also, you know, I, I have a friend, he's a, he's a nin, ninjutsu uh, practitioner. Ninjutsu is an old, old Japanese traditional martial art. And uh, there is a one part of this, uh, of this discipline called Nimpo. And Nimpo is on Japanese, uh, some kind of a school for life. And they emphasize on on mental and emotional development of the of the of those uh, practitioners or of the ninjas. And uh, he said to me that what is really really important uh, every day that, that when you wake up, your brain starts recycling the the history, the old stories, the old ideas, and the memories inside of your head. And if if you don't step this this cycle it will always be re reliving your past so the thoughts will be about the past and your present will be about that past you you will you will just uh, repeat the same actions that you, that you did yesterday so the only way to cut that cord and to to cut this cycle to break this cycle is by visualization so the first thing that you do when you wake up, you just visualize how do you want to live from now into the future. And what is really, really important is that 
you really uh, you really emphasize this picture inside of your mind and to really emphasize the emotion because you know our minds work in pictures we see images in our mind and when we see image that image makes and creates emotion and only when the emotion is high enough or intense enough then is the time that then is the time that only time that we can make new action and change behavior so it is it is a really really interesting concept correct yeah yeah i agree with you man of all that too <laughs> yeah so uh when you said that okay so you 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 have your routine for sleeping it is enough for you you read so every day you're trying to to learn something new to learn from from the people that, that you found, find inspiring and empowering uh, you visualize and can you tell me right now so we are talking about productivity right now can you maybe tell me what is your main fo focus right now and uh, how do you set your priorities throughout the day so what is what is your main focus right now in this period of time well, in terms of how i prioritize I, and really fast i don't put too much thought on it but mm -hmm. i analyze my situation you know my current situation and i analyze the action or the thing that i do that is gonna give me the most that is oh. gonna influence even the other activities that i have to do so if I achieve this, if, if I do this, I could call call it a good day. Mm -hmm. This will benefit myself. This will benefit my business. This will, this will benefit my goals. So that's mm. how, how I do it. And sometimes, you know, you have to sacrifice some stuff. You know, and, and, and if you, let's mm -hmm. say, also I make a... a um, um, how to say that? Um... I go to my calendar and I put all the activities that I that I'm gonna do at night. So I create my day at night. Mm -hmm. So I already, my brain already knows what's gonna happen the next day. So probably I have like ten important activities, but mm -hmm. from those ten important activities, I just select three. And mm -hmm. for those from those three, I select one that is the mm -hmm. one that I have to do no matter what. Mm -hmm. So. The next day, I just think, okay, I have this amount of time. I have to go go here and do this, this, and that. And then I'm, okay, I'm just going to do my number one. Mm -hmm. After I do my number one, whatever else I do, it's going to be extra. So mm -hmm. that's create, that creates momentum for me because I already achieved the number one, and then I can do number th number four, number five, Sometimes I have done as, up to number 10 mm -hmm. and I feel like I gave my, my hundred percent, you know, mm -hmm. during the day. But there are some days that uh, I'm not as productive as I would like to. So mm -hmm. sometimes I just achieve seven, sometimes five. There weren't even days that I just achieved one or two things, you mm -hmm. know, but I don't let that those days um, define me and mm -hmm. define what I, what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, in terms of product, I don't know if I have to talk about this with you, but uh, I started my own business uh, 10 months ago, December mm -hmm. last year. And I quitted my job and I started my, my design studio for, for you know, architecture, blueprints mm -hmm. and stuff. So at the beginning of the year, it was going mm -hmm. pretty well. And a couple of months ago, I just had a hard time about it. You know, like ha hard time finding clients, uh, having hard time with current clients. So what I started to do was like analyzing myself and asking those hard questions. Mm. You know, like why, why, what am, why, what am I doing mm -hmm. wrong? Why I am not having more clients? Why am, am I not produ producing more money? Mm -hmm. 
Why am I not selling more people? Why my my client list is not growing? Mm-hmm. So I had a hundred reasons to blame something else, you know? Mm-hmm. But at the end, I just recognized that it was all on me. Mm-hmm. So what I started doing is, okay, I have to fix this. Probably I'm not good at following up with clients. I have to get better at it. Probably uh, the way I produce blueprints are not good enough. I have to, you know, like step up my game at it. Mm -hmm. I started doing social media, like Instagram, to, to be able to reach more people and then I asked myself, am I doing the right thing? So I asked a couple of my friends um, and they guided me. One mm-hmm. of them is um, my friend, my friend, one of my best friends, Keith, and my other best friend, Crystal, mm-hmm. uh, my friend, Raphael. I asked them a couple of questions about my business and about the experience that they have had with their own businesses. And they were able to guide me a little bit. So I was like, okay, I was doing it wrong. I have to do to have a different approach. So I just been analyzing what the all the process from where I get the client until I finish. How has been my performing, you know? Mm. So I just just identify a lot of points that I have to get better at. Mm-hmm. And it's not something crazy. I just have to put in the work, trial. You know, trial and error, see what works, what doesn't, yeah. and uh, adjust and keep moving forward. So that's my mentality right now, just to get better at it. Ask for help to mm-hmm. pe- to people, friends, even people that I don't know, you know, like that I just know that they, they know what I don't. So mm-hmm. I ask them, uh, look in books, uh, you know, resources, yeah. and try to 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 even bring my my business to its best you know mm. so you are a, a fresh entrepreneur this this is your first startup yes it is so are you the only one uh, employed right now in this startup yes i am <laughs> it's not it's it's all, all you are all by yourself right now Okay. Correct. Yeah, but uh, this this is a uh, very courageous of you. It is really brave. Congrats! I'm. I want to congratulate you on, on opening your own business, starting your own business. Uh, Thank you. And this is this is uh, maybe uh, a, a great question for for this point or for this part of the interview. Then, and uh, do you have maybe some kind of a mentors? That that is that that are mentoring you uh, about how to how to uh, start a business, how to grow a business. Do you have maybe some coaches? You 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 said to me that you have uh, that you were using the services of a life coach. Is it? Yes, I do have a life coach. Uh, we see each other probably once a month. About that. Okay. Uh, he he gives me advice in terms of business in general. Also, but, yeah. but I've been looking for a mentor in terms of architecture, you know, someone mm-hmm. that is doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't succeeded on that. I've been asking people. I've been putting myself out there. So I have faith that that if I keep doing the work and keep asking, one day I will find someone that wants to mentor me, you know, in terms of, of the business and, and be able to to reach the next level, get better at it. And, and what can, what, what can, like, what can you do for, for, for a mentor? Uh, I can do work for free. You know, that's something that I've been offering. Like I can do work for free for you. Mm-hmm. I can uh, help you probably if you already have your business established, uh, we'll see w- which parts are not been taken care of properly. And probably I can, you know, feed in, and, and, and bring value to those areas mm-hmm. that uh, that need some uh, more attention. Also, what I do is like uh, most of the big like to go to uh, to visit the clients. You know, they are more like I want to work on my office, so I could take care of that part. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, like just the work that doesn't require them can do it. That's pretty much what I'm offering for now. And still I'm open to suggestions, you know, people sometimes come up to me and, and they are like, hey, Abraham, you should consider doing this for for contractors, for builders, for architects, mm. for designers. And and I'm taking everything into account and then I'm reaching out. You know, I'm, every time that I go to building and safety to submit plans, um, I, I talk with people up there because they are doing the same thing or something similar that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I just ask them for their business card and I give them my business card and I now offer my service like, hey, I'll do this, this and mm. this. I could use these programs and I could help you with something. Probably we can create a relationship from where both benefit, mm -hmm. you know, we both benefit from it. So that's, I think it's been a good approach and people have been reacting to it, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been rich for... Uh, for um, just so far, two people have contacted me to in order to work with them. So I think I'm already making progress. Uh, what I recommend people is you just have to keep doing the work until it works. Mm -hmm. You know, and put yourself up there and try. Just ask, and if people say no, it's okay. You just go and ask for the next one. <laughs> of course, and no one is like you know, taking care of um, my business, but me. Mm -hmm. So I have to, to do this, to, to, to give my all for my business. Mm. You know, uh, one of my suggestions maybe to you, this is something that, that, I, that I do. I also have a coach. Uh, I'm also visiting, I, I, I have meetings with this coach uh, once a month, just like you. And it is combination of business and life coaching also. Uh, once more thing, I have, I don't have in-person mentor, but I'm a part of, uh, of one Facebook group and I paid 100 bucks and I, I've got a lifetime uh, subscription to it. And right now I think it's 40 or $50 a month. So I don't know if you ever heard about Sean Thomas, ask a millionaire. No, I haven't. Okay. So. Um, he is really popular on Instagram. He has a, a, above 1 million followers uh, on Ask a Millionaire. Uh, it's, it's the name of, of, the, of the Instagram page. And there, there, there are right now around 10 mentors inside of this Facebook group that, that are doing regular live calls. So live video, video Facebook calls in, inside of the Facebook and uh, mm -hmm. some of those mentors are billionaires not mil okay. not millionaires but billionaires and with b b yes okay. and we can uh, so they they schedule a live uh, live call and we can ask questions there and they answer to our, to our questions so if you cannot find a mentor in person maybe you can find something like that 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 su suits you and that, that that can that can help you until you you find someone in person and the third thing that, that i also did and uh, that i have a great benefit uh, with uh, till now is is the mastermind group i i formed a mastermind group here in zagreb in croatia and we meet regularly. We meet every uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. And I have 20 members. Uh, so 20 of, of us are in a Facebook group. But uh, every, every week, uh, around six or seven of us are meeting regularly. And uh, all of us are with, with different backgrounds, with different uh, specialties, expertise, and things like that. So we really, really help each other. All of us have set, set our goals and presented those goals to the group. And we all brainstorm uh, about each other's goals and help each other uh, give uh, feedback back, 
uh, create some plans, strategies, and really be uh, an encouragement, empowerment, and also what is really, really important, an accountability partners to each other so that we really, really do the actions that we need to do. So this, this is my yeah. suggestion. If you can form your own mastermind group there in Los Angeles, and it will be really easy for you. So I don't know, you, you can have one, one person who is, uh, I don't know, he's working for a bank or the second person, he's a spe his specialty is in digital marketing. The third person is, I don't know, in, in maybe some other industry. And so if five or six or seven of you are meeting regularly, then each of you can benefit from each other. You know, Correct. it's really, really a powerful idea. So this is my suggestion to you and you can, you can really, you can think about it. And if, if you need any, any help in the future, just, just send me a text and I will, I will be, uh, I will gladly uh, help you. Well, I appreciate the, the support, the idea and uh, your offer, man. I'll, I'm, I'm going to definitely, definitely take the, take your word <laughs> and, and ask for help about it. Um, I'm going to look for those masterminds, you know, in terms of architecture. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's curious, like, um, it's, um, very, um, it's a coincidence, I think, or not a coincidence because we're, you know, in the same, um, path looking for, um, get better you know mm -hmm. so also my my best friend kid and i we have a mastermind mm -hmm. it's just the two of us for now mm -hmm. and we have uh, a google hangout like a a live a video call okay every every tuesday mm -hmm. of the every week every tuesday and we talk about everything you know uh, about uh, business, about life, about problems, about the good things, about uh, anything, and yeah. and we're pretty transparent, and we we put ourselves in a vulnerable place, you know, like hey, this is me, these are my weaknesses, these are my ex strengths, and we help each other, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we motivate each other, and we support each other, and. I think that helps a lot, you know, personally, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if my friend knows, <laughs> I, I think he does, but, uh, whenever he, he makes time to talk to me and share what he wants to share with me and listen to me, give me advice and guide me and, or give me just his, his own opinion. It means the world to me because mm -hmm. I could, I could. I could keep going, you know, it's like, oh, my friend is here to, to help me keep moving forward. Mm. And I appreciate that very much. So I think very soon we're going to start growing that um, mastermind group. Mm. And I'm going to take uh, into account what you just said to me today and uh, really bring that to the next level. Hopefully you can give us some advice of how to yeah, do it better. Of course, of course. I'm doing it uh, for six months right now. And uh, yeah. it's just getting better and better. So we, we meet uh, regularly every Thursday for six months. And it's just getting better and better. So this was a learning process for me also. So we have uh, the first part of the meeting right now is called mm -hmm. rap Rapid Fire. Okay, so each member have around three to five minutes to give give an update to the group of uh, what what is he doing about his goals and uh, what are his next actions actions. So this is a rapid fire. Each member does it, and the second part of the of the meeting is hot seat. So we pick one person from the mastermind group and we focus only on him so he will get half an hour he, he will say to us uh, where is he not right now what problems or challenges does he have uh, i don't know to to make the next step to, to his uh, goal 
and we are giving him feedback and we, we, we can do a workshop for, together. We can make a big discussion. We can brainstorm about something and really, really try to help him and uh, just, just, just have the, this attitude of service to him for this half an hour. And the last mm -hmm. part of the meeting uh, for, for the last half an hour, we just pick a subject, we pick, we pick a topic and we just discuss it. I don't know, today maybe we are going to talk about productivity. And we spent half an hour talking about productivity. And this is an interesting con concept. You say that you and your friend are talking uh, about those things. And you know, when two minds uh, come together, you got a, a new mind, a better mind called mastermind. So just imagine mm -hmm. what, what will happen when you have five, six, seven, eight of the minds that, that are really, really have this attitude of, of uh, this, this kind of a growth mindset. So it's really, really beneficial. It's really beneficial. Yeah. All right. So definitely, I'm gonna take action on that. Just just text me if you if you consider it and if you wanna grow your mastermind, I'm really here to help you. No problem. Uh, one one more thing that I wanna ask you uh, regarding uh, the the productivity. Do you have any maybe challenges because of the use of of this modern technology? like phones or computers because what i what i found out uh, is that a lot of people have big problems uh, with distraction uh, that is coming from uh, the phones the social media and things like that so so do you find this challenging do, do you feel that you you are losing maybe time and that you are being distracted by, by this uh, new obsession, uh, by, by this new disease in, in, in society? Um, I think that I, that I am distracted by them, you know, because I decide to, you know, I spend sometimes um, a little more than what I should be spending on the apps, you know, Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp, YouTube, but the thing is that I've been trying to turn them into my favor, you know, like, okay, you want to watch some videos on YouTube, watch videos that are going to give you value. Mm -hmm. That's like for my business or for my habits or something that I want to learn, you know, so that benefits me. So I'll do it. Sometimes with this Instagram, I use it to, to post like kind of my journey mm -hmm. and to inspire other people, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like what I do is just to show people that it's possible. So I'm using mm -hmm. Instagram as a mm -hmm. tool, not as a distractor. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of things to be distracted by, but uh, I choose not to spend a lot of time on, over there. Just a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I'm not saying that I don't get distracted. So a little bit, I take a look here and there. But I try more to share my journey and inspire others. Yeah, is 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 the matter the is the matter of the thing who is using whom? Is your phone using you, or yeah. you are using your phone? Yeah. Uh, you said you said that perfectly, man. I like that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, uh, on the iPhone, on the, on the new iOS uh, software operating system. Mm -hmm. You, you have a new app that is built in and it is called Screen Time. So it is really interesting because it, it gives you the analytics of the uh, apps that you are using. How much time are you spending in each app? Uh, what is the number of notifications that you get during the day? So when you look at the numbers, <laughs> you your jaw just drops and you cannot believe that this is the amount of the time that that you have spent uh, on, on on the on on this phone and in those apps and when you know that 
just like you said, you try to be productive, you try to, to do the to do something of value in there, but you know we are all humans and uh, we we lose uh, track of, of of productivity and and those things and we just got distracted and we go in in the in the, that autopilot mode and do something that is not really in our favor. So it's really really yeah. interesting. This is the topic that I've been thinking uh, about a lot lately because I see I see, of course, you Abraham when you walk on the streets of Los Angeles, if you go with a public transport or you are people next to you, on, on, I don't know when you are when you are stopping on the road, you can see how much people are looking on their phones. We 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 look just like a zombies to me in the in the last few years. It's a it's a big problem that that I think that that it needs to be addressed very very soon. Yeah, I agree with you, man. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, um, I used to be one of those. <laughs> I think I used to spend a lot of time on the phone. But right now, I'm using it more as a tool. And you know, whenever I have a chance, I just put it away, you know, and, and, and create a new habit of not depending, not, not be depending on, on my phone. Mm. You know, even at night, so I just put it away. I, I leave the, the phone away from me. And so I don't have that um, feeling of, oh, I, I want to check Instagram. I want to check Facebook. No, it's away. It's done. I have to do other stuff, reading at night a little bit and do other activities that are going to give me value instead of taking it from me, you know? Mm. Let me let me take a, a, a big turn right. So uh, can you tell me maybe if you know why is it that you want to be successful? What, 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 is, what is this drive inside of you? And what, what do you think, where this drive comes from? Why do you want to achieve bigger things in life and uh, live above the average? Okay, that's a pretty good question. <sighs> well, I think... But I want to be successful because I want to enjoy life. And I know some people can be average and still enjoy, enjoy life. But to me, um, I want to be able to impact positively a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I want to be able, as I travel the world, mm -hmm. and, and have, you know, be able to experience those experiences that you know, some of them cost money. Mm -hmm. So in order to have the resources to have those experiences and also give those experiences to others, I have to, to take care of myself and my business and be able to bring value to the marketplace so I can make money, so I can share those that, that, that money with, with other people mm -hmm. or that success with other people. Because mm -hmm. let's say that I, do, I am not successful, that I'm, I'm not doing the work and anything. I'm just an average guy. You know, people don't, don't take you seriously, you know, when you share something. The, if you want to invite them to have, uh, to do certain activity, uh, they are like, but you don't do that type of thing, you mm -hmm. know. You, you haven't done it, so I don't believe you I don't trust you because you don't have anything to bug you up but if you are successful if you have done the things that you are preaching uh, people are gonna trust you they're gonna believe you they're gonna follow you mm -hmm. and you know I want to change humanity in a positive way you know I, I don't like when I see people suffering because they cannot confront fear or insecurities mm. you know so if i confront them and 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 i'm 
at the end, I'm a winner. People can believe me and be able like, okay, I'm going to confront them as well. Mm. So they can take the leap. They can take the next step. And we, mm. and you know, by being successful, I think we, 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 we can change humanity, you know, in a good way. Mm. I don't know about you know, what happens in Croatia, but here, here in the U.S. and in my country, Mexico, um, there are a lot of uh, psychological problems, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of trauma that we have. Mm -hmm. um, parents, grandparents, and the people that we're surrounded with. And... And I believe that if you become successful, if you do the work, you can change those programs in our brain and and really change society. How have you ever imagined like a successful society? How would it be that everybody can achieve what they want? You know, of course, there is going to be challenges, there is going to be struggle, but the people instead of cry about it, and complain about it, they embrace it. Okay, I have this challenge. You're welcome. You're mm. welcome in my life. Let's do it. Mm. Yeah, man, I agree. I agree with you. And this is this is also my mission in life. So this is why I started this. Uh, um, I started this this brand, a loot. So life of our dreams for the people that don't know still <laughs> what the acronym stands for. You know, uh, I, I'm, I was thinking a lot. You see, when you think about it, our, our minds are just a mental software, is it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this mental software was uh, created by few things. So I'm thinking about few pillars there. So the first one is, we can, we can say it's genetics. So we, we, we got some things by our genetics. The second, the second pillar is our parenting. So what did you learn with and about uh, from your parents during your childhood? This is a very, very important part. The third part is your formal education system. So what, how, was, how was your formal education system? What did they learn you, learned you, taught you? The, the fourth one is media. Media, it is really, really important. And when you combine all of this together, you really got a product like Abraham. So you, you, had, you, have, uh, you had some kind of a parenting, you, you, you lived in some kind of an environment in, in, this, in one city in Mexico, so you went to school there, uh, and, and then you, you had some kind of a uh, media and you consume uh, this content from this media and this government had some kind of a plan so why they're going to, to produce some content like this and share and distribute content like, like, content like this. And so when you combine all of this, so this, this is uh, a part of your condition, conditioning and this is why you are right now the way you are because all those things combine together. And this is something that I'm trying to build uh, in a company. So loot will be a media company. So we're, we're going to create a lot of content. Lude is going to be an educational company. So we're, we are going to create uh, courses and we're going to organize events, conferences, and things like that. And the target, uh, target audience for, for it will be young people who are planning planning to be parents soon or young parents so they they will have a motivation their biggest motivation will be to learn and to grow themselves so they can transfer that knowledge to their kids so they that they break this negative 
cycle and that they can nurture and create a more uh, empowering, uh, stronger human beings. And this is, this is my vision about, about it. So what do you think? And that's fantastic, man. I think uh, this world needs more people like you that is really looking for to create a, a, an, a, an education system to teach um, young people, especially, you know, kids and as you mentioned young people, that, um, that there is something more than what a uh, what the regular education system offers, mm -hmm. you know, because, because what if they teach you how to love yourself, man? Mm -hmm. That's very important. And, and in the school, they don't teach you that. <laughs> the first time that I heard about yeah. it was when I found it in a book by myself when I was 25 years old. See? And it's, it is, yeah, it is, it is too late. Yeah, it is too late. It's not too late. It is. It is late, but it's not too late. Yeah, it is late. Yeah, it's it's just like you just wasted, bro. Not wasted, but you had trouble during those twenty five years before, mm -hmm. you know, finding that piece of knowledge that changed your life. Mm -hmm. you know? So, what if kids were taught those that type of knowledge when they are young, so they can create a different humanity? You know, where they love each other, they support each other, they, they embrace fear, they embrace pain, they embrace challenges, and they don't think that they are bad, but the, the catalyst to become better, you know? Um, if they teach you how to discipline, will will help you, will free you from the chains of, uh, you know, doubt and insecurity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what if they teach you how, how to create money? You know, it's just, you have to give value to people. That's easy. If you give value to people, they're going to give you money. Of course. If, there's a phrase, I think, that says, if you help people get what they want, you will get what you want, you know? They will give you yeah. the resources to get what you want. So it's, It sounds so simple. It sounds yeah. so simple, yeah. It is. Yeah, but you know, if nobody tells us that, it's just they just tell us. Or at least that's how I grew up. You have to go to school, you know, for what twenty three years, so you can get a career, then work for someone else, and then you produce money enough to have a house, have a family, and live an average life until you become fifty, sixty years old, and you retire. Then. You're going to enjoy your golden years, right? Mm -hmm. And, dude, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have uh, the money and be able to enjoy life when I'm 60. Mm -hmm. I want to enjoy it now. I want to have the money now, and I want to enjoy it. I enjoy life now. Mm -hmm. I know it's a process. It will take time for me to get at the economic level that I want to be, but I want to enjoy life now. Mm. And I want other people to do it as well. Yeah, this is this is why I asked you the question: Where do you think that this drive of yours comes from? Where does this ambition comes from? Uh, and I think that maybe uh, it comes from uh, from the from the things like media, from the from things like Hollywood, the movies. Uh, so they are they are. For years, they are trying to impress our subconscious that this is something that we need to strive for. All of us need to strive to become better, to become more, to become richer, to become uh, smarter, more handsome, I don't know, and things like that. And which, uh, what, what this uh, creates inside of a human being, it, it can create a lot of frustration, you know? Especially if you have uh, a big expectations for your life and you cannot produce it in reality. So in this moment, you can create a lot of headaches for yourself and a lot of frustrations. And I think that a lot of people will 
really, really feel something like that. Because on a, on, a, on a big scale, a lot of us are trying to be uh, special. We are trying to be successful, whatever that means in our terms. And not many of us will come to, the, to that point. So do you have any opinion maybe on that? How do you how do you take care of that your big expectations? You know Tony Robbins have a, a, a saying. He has, he says trade your expectations with appreciations. Yeah, okay. because if you have actually. this <laughs> expectation that that you want to achieve something and you are not achieving it day by day, day by day, year by year is passing by and you are not achieving it and you are having this vision inside of your head and you are not doing enough or maybe you are not doing anything about it and you're just creating a frustration. A lot of people are doing that. So what is your opinion on that? How do you make sure that you have enough of a patience and when you know that life really is not 100% under your control so something that, that I was uh, taught uh, in this uh, ninjutsu school of Nimpo, this, this is something that I re also went through, is that we can control, this is uh, how we were thinking about it, you control 51% and the environment controls 49%. You know, so I will do my part, I will go into the di direction that I want to go, and those dominoes will fall how they want to fall outside. So there are some kind of outside forces that I cannot control. But I can, I can steer in the direction that I want to steer and the things will fall how they want to fall. And I need to react and I, I got to have the attitude that, that will uh, bring me through this noise and bring me to, uh, through, through those challenges. So what is your opinion on, on all of this that, that I just said? Yeah, actually, um, I used to be like very anxious, you know, about mm -hmm. achieving my goals now, you know. I had no patience and I was feeling bad about myself. You know, I was like, Abraham, you're not good enough. Even worse, I used to think that I was a good for nothing because I was not achieving mm -hmm. my goals, you know? I was like, well, I decided to have this goal and then I've been working for so long mm -hmm. and it hasn't happened, you know? But I was not analyzing myself, like, why it hasn't happened? Is, is it because you are not doing the right thing? Is it because your strategy is lacking something? Is it because you're not surrounded with the right people? Is it because of your thought process, your beliefs? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of facts. So then I started analyzing those parts in my life. And then I was like, okay, then all these facts are involved in the results that I have. So what I started to do is, okay, I have this big goal. But I'm going to enjoy the small ones that are going to lead me to that goal. You know, that are going to help me get there. Um, so I just appreciate everything, man. Like even that, I, that I'm having, like for example, right now, that I'm having this moment with you. Mm. I appreciate that. How many people have mm -hmm. the chance to do this? You know, with, with a friend from, from another continent. And we're able to do this when in my place is two two p.m. and in your place is uh, what eleven eleven twenty six. Yeah, you know, yeah, almost almost twelve, man. And we're doing it, you know. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful about it. I'm grateful that that I have a place where to live, you know. And because that place is leading me to the next place that I want, you know, I have to have this. I have to experience this in order to value yeah. the next thing. So what I believe is that people are so fixated, you know, and focus on the end up result that they are not enjoying the process. They are not enjoying mm. the now, what mm. they have now. 
even though it might not be what you want, but it's what you have. So be grateful about it. Because, you know, sometimes I compare myself, like there are people that they don't have the opportunity mm -hmm. that I have. You know, there are people that they, they haven't even have mm -hmm. a phone in their hands. You know, so I'm like, okay, I have a phone, I have a computer, I have friends, I have a car, I have an education, I have a business, I have all these mm. things. I have my arms, I, have, I am 20 years old, and my brain works well, I can eat, I can drink water, I can uh, think, I can, all my senses are working well, so I'm, I'm thankful mm -hmm. about that, you know, so... I think that helps me go through my days and don't feel that I'm not progressing. Because, mm. um, you know, uh, every day is helping me a little bit. A little bit and you are the bit. only one uh, who is going to decide what is fast and what is slow. Correct. You know, like one of my friends, he always remind me, you know, like your time will come. Your, your time, time has, come. has already Because, you know, sometimes I compare came. myself. <laughs> Your time is already here. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, but, but you know, sometimes we compare ourselves with someone that yeah. is more successful. Because than we us. we have opportunity to do to that uh, today, because uh, one hundred years ago we we cannot we could not compare ourselves to someone living on another continent because we didn't have a a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. You you That's have true. you have That's Hollywood true. in okay. in your place, so you you are living in Los Angeles, and Hollywood is making a propaganda for, uh, for half of of the planet. So we in Croatia here we also mm -hmm. watch the Hollywood movies, and mm -hmm. they are the ones setting the ideals for 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 something. There's, they are the ones creating the, the, the value systems also. This is very, Correct. very important. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and you know, um, I think one of the scenes in, in several movies that I, that I have seen, you know, the time lapse, you know, that they, they, they put where this guy or this girl is, is having a goal and then you can see like everything passing fast like oh you can see a scene where he's studying mm. but he is working out where he is um, not spending money and then all of a sudden after five years he is successful mm. you know mm. but it gives you that type of scene gives you the idea that it's gonna pass fast mm -hmm. you know and that after five years whatever you're doing is gonna bring you to that place that you desire and it's not true during those five days you have to put in the work you have to make mistakes and and, and you have to learn mm -hmm. and, 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 and 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 optimize your 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 um your habits your the way you think the way you believe the way you act the way you speak the way you communicate you know all those aspects you have to take care of them during that period of time then you might achieve that success in five years or it might take you 10 years and it's okay. Yeah, and uh, what is really interesting also is that all those celebrities or successful people that are presented to us, we see them only right now when they are already on the top and nobody, mm -hmm. nobody showed to us what, what they look like uh, 15 or 20 years ago when they're when they're just starting when they're they're feeling their, their struggles inside of them and really trying to find clarity in their lives and uh, really trying to find faith in themselves and, and things like that you know nobody showed showed us this they they showed us the end product you know and this is why i, I just want to you know when Two of us are speaking right now. I don't know to, for how many people would be this interesting because when they see our names, they don't know who we are. They're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be a, a great clickbait on internet, are we? 
you know and uh, <laughs> we are we are two of, uh, two of guys that, that are on the base of the mountain and i don't know uh, conor mcgregor he is on the top of the mountain you know he's on the top of mm -hmm. the mountain so a lot of us are looking to them and trying to learn from them and sometimes they are too far away that we cannot even relate to them you know mm -hmm. maybe maybe uh, the people that, that are starting right now can learn more from us than from them you know correct i agree with that mm -hmm. yeah uh, have you watched maybe i think that i saw on your instagram that that you are part of the mma community that you are watching maybe uh, ufc or something like this yeah i used to watch uh, those fights because um i think a couple of years ago i used to to practice mixed martial arts mm -hmm. i practiced it for a little bit a mm -hmm. couple of months and have fun with it you know mm -hmm. have you watched the the, the last uh, the last match of between mcgregor and uh, nurmagomedov and um, Khabib? Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good fight, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just superior than Conor McGregor, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been working harder than McGregor. Even though McGregor works hard, but he just found someone that has done more work than him. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. You know, it, it is it is funny. Uh, uh this year so uh, croatia our national team in, in soccer or in football like like it is said here in in europe uh, mm -hmm. uh have you heard about the world cup in in football yes i have ah, so this year uh croatia was playing in the finals with france and croatia w won the second place Correct. And uh, I was uh, in, in the finals. I was in the in the Russia in Moscow, and mm -hmm. there I met I I met Khabib. <laughs> and oh really? Yeah, I met Khabib there, and uh, I took a picture with him. And uh, fast forward few 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 months uh, ahead, and he and Connor are uh, competing for a lightweight championship, and he won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was I was rooting for Connor, despite of of his uh, big mouth and all those thing, things. Yeah, but it, interesting. This is this is something that that uh, I really enjoy to watch, because I think that a lot of things that we are talking about right now you can find in in, in martial arts. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, man. Uh, a uh, couple of questions more. Can you tell me maybe right. what brings smile on your face? What brings a smile on my face? <laughs> uh, the, the, there are a lot of things, but I'm going to share what happened a couple of days ago, actually last Thursday. Man, I was just driving back home and I was just looking at the sky. And I know it's gonna sound silly, but you know, I just found that the sky was so beautiful, man. Different tones of blue, white, and, and gray. All the clouds were bright and different tones as well. And it was just a beautiful scene and I was so grateful that I was able to spot it and be able to appreciate it. So I was just driving like slow and enjoying it. And I asked myself, you know, like how many times I have, have missed this beautiful scene, you know, life. Mm -hmm. To me, what's life? Yeah. So I was all the way to my place. I was I was just smiling, mm. and I went off from my car, you know, and and I was just admiring mm. that 
that scene and I was just smiling, smiling yeah. and smiling and smiling. So uh, that was one of the best moments that I have had in a couple months, you know, and as I said, it sounds silly. <laughs> it's something so simple. It's something so simple, man, mm-hmm. that we take sometimes for, gra- for granted, you know. We take a lot yeah, of things yeah. for granted, <laughs> a lot of things, things every day, yeah. So I think the simple things, the simple things are the ones that bring me big smiles. Mm. You know, cool. Um, sometimes I could just receive a text for, from someone and then I smile. Yeah. Sometimes I could just be aware of the moment mm-hmm. and then smile. Mm. Or, yep. You know, a lot of people, if you stop them on the street and you ask them, what do you want to accomplish in life? A lot of, a lot of them will say, I want to be happy. Or aren't it? Uh, and uh, I, I, I was thinking about it and uh, I really came to the conclusion that really don't want to be happy. But we are always, we are always searching for moments of feeling fully alive. Mm-hmm. You know, when Correct. when when moments like this present themselves, when we fully alive, feel fully alive, then we are happy. And the 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 moment that you just mentioned earlier, so you were looking at the the sky and you felt alive you felt present in this moment and this is why you you felt happy yep yeah yep. definitely yeah and uh, can you tell me if maybe for 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 the end uh, what is the importance of of humor in your life and how do you uh, not take life so seriously because I can see in you uh, and I can see in myself that we are two ambitious and driven uh, persons uh, and that we can sometimes take life so seriously that we forgot maybe to, to, to to laugh, to smile, and to to really keep it more simple. Hmm. Well, humor. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, how I use humor is whenever I have I made a mistake or something bad happens to me, something weird happens to me. I just laugh about it. You know, mm-hmm. and even when people get mad. Sometimes, you know, I'm just laughing. Sometimes, even on the freeway, you know, here, traffic is crazy, so there are some crazy drivers as well. And they hear and tell you the F word and everything, you know, like, and I just laugh, you know, I just laugh. And I'm like, oh, that was cool. I haven't heard that word um, or I haven't seen that action in a long time. So, oh, thank you, man. Cool. And I just hmm. laugh about it. And sometimes I've been involved in embarrassing moments. You know that if I were the Abraham of the past, I would feel ashamed and hide myself feel bad about it. Right now, no, I have like embarrassing moments and I just laugh, you know? Then I'm like, okay, that's happened to me. That's okay. And I laugh about it. And the curious thing that happens is Sometimes the people that are seeing you while that happens, just because of your reaction wasn't negative in a certain way, mm-hmm. they they laugh with you, you know, and they 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 don't bother you because you're not um, you're not affected by by that um, mm. action, you know. Yeah. So I like to laugh about that and about my mistakes, about bad decisions. Or sometimes when I'm very frustrated about something that I think that it's going to happen and at the end doesn't happen or um, it's just different than I thought and i like, oh, Abraham, you were so worried about this 
and <laughs> and it didn't happen, you know. And I laugh about it. Mm. So a, a lot, a lot of opportunities to laugh, to laugh, and this is this is great, of course. Uh, can you recommend one book to the listeners? One book. Hmm. I would say from all the books. Hmm. I would say discipline equals freedom, man. Mm. You can read two pages every day. Mm -hmm. And it gives you this sense of not bullshit, you know? Because mm. sometimes we just make a lot of excuses and lies about our life and about why we're not doing or we're not where we want to be. Mm. So it takes out this, the, the bullshit, all the mm. lies, all the excuses, and then you execute. Mm. So I think that book has very good insights. And yeah, I think the book I would recommend right now. Thanks for the recommend. Uh, well, can you maybe tell the audience uh, who do you follow and who do you recommend them to follow? on the internet what kind of a shows do you watch on youtube what kind of a podcast do you listen listen to so who is the person that influenced you the most right now on the internet we're right now following a lot joko willing which is the author of the book mm -hmm. discipline equals free he has another couple of books um uh, extreme ownership that is uh, another book that i would recommend mm. And he has another book. The new one is The Dichotomy of Leadership. Mm. I haven't read that one. I already have it, but I'm rereading Extreme Ownership so I can get on the other one. Mm. Uh, I'm following him a lot because I needed discipline in my life. Mm. And I think, I believe that that guy is the, the incarnation <laughs> mm. or yeah incarnation of discipline you know um he is so disciplined that his discipline is shared you know you absorb a piece of it mm. and then you decide to 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 be disciplined because of everything that he shares you know and it makes sense if you study what he says what he promotes it makes sense, man. Mm. Just that phrase, discipline equals freedom, I think yep. is right on point, you know? Right on point, yeah. I love I love I love his photos on Instagram. The first the first photo is so it is around four o'clock in the morning and the second photo is always uh, the the floor after the workout. <laughs> sweaty All floor. Sweaty, huh? Yeah, I just <laughs> I loved his his photos on Instagram. Yeah, and he he says a lot of, <laughs> with those two pictures. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's the biggest one that I'm following right now. And of course, Tom Bellew from Impact Theory. Mm. Um, I follow him on social media, and I watch uh, his YouTube channel every time that I have a, a chance. Mm. Another guy that for me is very strong as well is um, Aubrey Marcus. Yeah. And um, I would recommend also Jordan B. Peterson mm. as well. Yeah, I'm reading his book right now, The 12 Rules, Rules for Life, and it is magnificent yeah. so far. Yeah. Magnificent. So you're going to become a lobster, huh? Ah! <laughs> so you know it. Uh... Uh yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, going, I'm going to be the the, the one lo the lobster that that, that has his uh, back his chest shoulders back sh shoulders back and ch chest uh, yeah up. chest up yep yeah and what, who else i would recommend also ed my mm. uh bedros Kulian, and andy frisella i think those guys mm. are the ones that, ha that have been influencing me a lot you know, because I'm looking for become the best version of myself and be disciplined. You know, be disciplined right now. Mm. Be disciplined. So 
these guys have been giving me tools and just their stories motivate me you know mm. you know what is interesting if you cannot find the five people around yourself that that you are going to be average of you can find them on the internet right now <laughs> you can find them on the internet these days because you know uh, are the people before us uh, maybe 15 20 or 30 years uh, in in the past they they really didn't have this kind of opportunity so this is this is something that is really really interesting and we got to be grateful for that also yeah definitely man yeah uh let us i could go with you for 100 hours believe me <laughs> and uh but i want to have some kind of a format of the show uh can you tell me for the end one or two questions more so your top three life values your top three core life values life three top core values okay hmm. Hmm. the first one is belief in yourself man Mm -hmm. second one be open to change mm. the third one always be learning man mm. so I believe that's what I think if you believe in you you know it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter who you think you are right now. Believe in you. Believe in you. Love you. Believe in you. Mm. That you could do the change, you know. And so then it comes the second one. That you are open to change. Mm. I believe in myself and I'm willing to change. Mm. And then you're going to learn, you know. The, the le learning, 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 learning from every, everybody that you think will bring value to your life, learn from that person. Mm. Great, man. Great. The final question. If you watched uh, Lewis House's uh, School of Greatness, he has a similar question for uh, in, in the end of the show. So, it is your last day on Earth and the loved ones gathered around you the last moments and you want to share with them the the pure knowledge and the pure wisdom uh, of, of your life experience and you need to condense it in just one point what did you learn from life and what what would you tell them what is one point. one point? What is the most important thing that you learned about life that you want to give them like a clue? What is the truth? What is, what is your truth in life? Let me think it. Let me put some thought on it. Mm -hmm. I think it would be do what makes you happy, regardless of someone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. And even the negative thoughts that you might have, mm -hmm. do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's pretty, probably simple, and a lot of people have said that. But I think, yeah, you have to be happier or be really alive, you know. Do what makes you feel alive, makes you happy. Regardless of your negative thoughts, regardless of what other people say, mm. and regardless of the limitations, you know, because we sometimes stop because of the limitations, but they are not limited for a human being, mm. I believe. Mm. Again, great choice. Great choice, man. You know what? Uh, I just want to congratulate you and I want to thank you for, for being with me and for 
helping me create this uh, podcast episode. I want to thank you for your patience because only two of us know how much time we have lost trying to figure it out how this Anchor app works. So super grateful, super thankful for, for this. And I just want to con congratulate you also for being so, so positive and for being so ambitious and driven and, and for having this, uh, this need and this thirst inside of yourself to succeed and to also inspire others around you with your actions to do the same things. And if you know, uh, there are only two needs of the spirit, of, of our spirit in life and those two needs are growth and service and you are my man working on both of them so you are constantly growing and you are always finding a ways to serve others so i just want to congratulate you on that thank you very much Vinko. it's an honor to be part of loot podcast and I enjoyed very much being interviewed by you. I think your your questions were right on point, man. Uh, they move a lot of my thoughts and feelings. And I hope that what I share with you um, can benefit the audience, even just a little bit. You know, make help them make a small change in their lives. And you know that you can count on me, man. If I can help you with anything else, just hit me up. And I'll be there. All right. 